Okay, so basically today I'm back with another video back in my filming setup with my bed um, and basically today I'm going to do a video about um, kind of a mix of interview questions and applying for university so if you guys have been following the blogs then you'll probably know that I've been in the process of applying to university and a couple of years ago when I did when I um, had a couple of interviews for six different six forms um, I spoke, did a video which I spoke about, I put the video up here and this was ages ago, I didn't use any lighting, it was a really basic video, literally a 4 minute video, like I don't know what it is, it had like 10 dislikes at one point and I don't know, but anyway, now you guys seem to really like it and seem to be asking me questions on that video, so I thought why not do an up to date one now and see with me being going to university and applying to university. So this video is kind of going to be like an overview of everything and how I started off everything and what I did to get where I am now so it might be boring if you guys aren't like looking to apply for university or like aren't that age group so I'm really sorry if it is but if you are looking to apply for university then these are just a few tips and this video is probably going to be incredibly long so I'm really sorry about that because it's just going to be me chatting so yeah we're just going to get straight into the video yeah so basically I'm just going to start off with how I first started to apply for university. So I don't know, obviously some of you that are applying the same year as me or like different year, um, you might have an, already have an idea of this, you might have already looked into it, it depends if you're at six or more college. So I'm also doing it from the perspective of me being at a college. So obviously if you're d at a sixth form it could be completely different but I know the UCAS and everything is all pretty similar. So basically you have to apply as like an undergraduate, I'm pretty sure. And I'm just, I've written down some notes, I'll probably forget some of the things that I wanted to like say and then if I like put them in like writing on the bottom or whatever or put an extra clip at the end, I'm, that's what I might do because I'm kind of bad at remembering everything. So basically the process application, you basically first of all have to find out what um, university slash college you want to go to. Basically for that you can either go to open days or use a computer, what was the, I'll put the website that I used that was really helpful, it was like what uni or something, I'll leave that below, I'll put that on the screen and that gives you lots of ideas, so you search the course you want to do um, and then you get all the different universities and what they do and specialise in. So for me personally, I'm applying to do an art subject, so um, I knew I wanted to do interior design, I knew that was the subject I wanted to do. If you don't know, if you're not too sure, look into the areas to say, obviously with design, there's so many different things, so art and design, so say you wanted to do art and design, look at what courses are available or what. If you are really struggling, try and look at doing a course that you're you know you'll love and enjoy, because at the end of the day, it's always really important to like enjoy something do you know what I mean even if you're not too sure just make sure you go into something that you know you're going to love and enjoy um, and that you really like at the moment so say if it's fashion look into fashion courses say if it's you love drawing look into like a fine art course but yeah so basically I knew I wanted to do interior design I researched the universities that did interior design when I started looking I originally wanted to do a foundation um, year um, but for interior design there's only very few um, universities that did it and a lot of the universities stopped it like the year this, the year that I'd be starting so basically I'm just going to say the three universities that I applied to is Edinburgh and um, Norwich University of the Arts and Chelsea College of the Arts which is the U University of Arts London because they have like a few of them the reason I wanted to um, choose those universities, I'm going to go through them like separately just so you guys are aware of my choices. Basically, I went to the Norwich Arts Open Day, I went for my interview um, and I have been offered a place there and I absolutely love Norwich. The accommodation is spectacular and it's just, it's just a lovely place to be. Another thing, so I personally, obviously I didn't go up to Edinburgh for the Open Day, but and I did actually go to Chelsea for the Open Day either and knew that it was really nice university and obviously University of Arts London is like second for art and design and basically so I only went for two interviews I went to Chelsea and I went to Norwich and they both went really well and I've got a place for both of them on the same entry requirements and I also have received a place from Edinburgh um, which is a slightly higher entry requirement 
but yeah, so they're all conditional offers. Um, difference between conditional and unconditional is conditional means on the conditions you get certain grades, unconditional means it doesn't matter what grade you get. Um, but yeah, so I personally didn't want to go to loads of open days because I didn't want to have loads of choices and can confuse myself because you can apply to up to five universities on UCAS and I didn't want to confuse myself or like because three choices for me because I didn't expect to get them all but three choices is enough choice for me to pick where to go because otherwise I'd just get even more confused and I didn't want to go all the way up to uni um, the open days absolutely love it and then not get a place because then I'd feel disappointed so that's why I didn't go to all the open days because I just but I'd never been to Norwich so I wanted to go to Norwich to look um, and I've obviously never been to Edinburgh so that's why I'm going in a few weeks to have a look um, but yeah so that is basically what's going on with my, my personal development sort of with it so yeah how you apply them you get the code you have to set up a UCAS account whether that be through your sixth form college or even if you're like a mature student and you're doing it like yourself you set that all up um, we had a lot of help from um, a careers advisor at my college and teachers um, help massively with um, our applications you then often so like with Edinburgh I had to send an online portfolio that is how I sent theirs I went to the interviews for the other two to show them my portfolio um, but yeah so that is basically the interview that is like the application process you have to get the code off the website fill in all a lot of information on UCAS is a lot of information and all about um, how you pay for it so like if you're getting a loan student loan things like that but you learn all that as you sort of go like you can research it that's what I did the internet like is the best thing for that you know Google's the best thing for that um, but yeah so that's that's what you could do obviously to research and find out well, that's what I sort of did as well and I had help from people around me that like teachers and that um, but yeah so you often I'd, my deadline this year was like the 15th of January I believe and then I had to send my portfolio to Edinburgh by the 29th I think it was so and I heard a couple of days ago and it's now March so it all moves you have to kind of start in December looking in fact just start as if you can start like I looked at um a music university last year when I was in my first year at college and some people might think that's too early but the earlier you can start the better because then you get an idea of what exactly you want to do so now I'm, I'm going to speak a bit faster because I feel like I've already rambled on so interview questions what I did personally is I researched um, what the course like was like um, focused around and I, re I really looked into the course because if you go to the interview knowing what they really what they do on the course and they know that you've researched and looked into it and you've not just turned up so and I also had in my head because I'm doing an art subject what who inspired me and I actually wrote down like bullet points which were um, specific to each university obviously of what they do in particular on that course and I remembered like it wasn't much so little bullet points and I like made myself remember every single bullet point of that if I'd been to any galleries if I'd read any books um, just things like that, not necessarily because they asked them questions, because to be honest they didn't, but just in case they did. And obviously one of the main questions is why that subject, so for me it was why interior design and why that university. So just make sure you know those two questions are vital and maybe research, obviously I'm talking on behalf of doing an art subject, it's different for other subjects. Um, so yeah, that is basically, I went up to the interview, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the exact interviews, if you want me to do a separate video explaining everything on the interviews then I will, um, but I'm not going to in this video because otherwise it's going to be really really long and you guys will probably get bored of me, and that's why I'm speaking fast. Um, portfolio, I'm probably going to do a separate video on that too, but just to briefly talk about it, I used the... Um, I used SimLab which is what my one of my teachers suggested because the prints are about one pound something for A3 size prints and I also used a box. Now one thing I noticed is obviously because I'm a photography student currently, every single student, there was probably about 30, 40 people in that room waiting to go in for Chelsea for interior design and they all had big folders like A1, A2, really massive folders, plastic folders, zip portfolios. Now obviously that's how you, you want to like 
um, show your work. No, I have no problems, obviously. You do whatever you want to do. But maybe try and think about the other ways you could display your work. Like, obviously, I did it in a box. And I was literally the only one there that had it in a box. But that might have been just because I do a photography subject. Whereas if other people have done fine art, they have bigger paintings and drawings. So that's just, I'm just putting that out there in case anyone wondered what sort of portfolio I used. Um, yeah, so that is like all I'm going to cover on the portfolio. Another thing with your portfolio, you have to be able to discuss it. That is so important for your interviews. If you turn up and you're like, well, this is this is a blue picture, this is a yellow picture, like they, they don't want that. They want all the information and the context behind the image. So if you're like, I took this in the studio because of blah, 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 because it represents blah, blah, and I, insp I was inspired by blah, blah, blah. And then... Yeah, you sort of get the idea of what I'm trying to say with that. Just make sure you can back up your reasoning behind all your work. I also had a little magazine that I made. So I had my sketchbook, my magazine and my portfolio. So obviously my portfolio was just images. My sketchbook had a mix of images and research. And my magazine was from a unit they did last year. Um, make sure, so say obviously with Norwich I had to stay the night and had to book travel and all that, make sure you have everything in order and organised, even a week or a few days before, just make sure you know what you've taken, you've got everything packed, everything ready if you're obviously staying for a couple of days and just make sure you give yourself enough time to say you know that, don't leave the last train to last minute do you know what I mean, make sure you get there with enough time if a train was delayed or the weather delayed it or something just remember that, or like tubes get delayed in London, so be prepared that you're there early enough that you're not going to be late for your interview. Um, another thing is to pick your outfit carefully. So I'm quite, I like to wear like, I don't know, pinks and blues and pastels, like they're like my colours sort of things, pink, grey and like white and that, like the sort of colours I love to wear. Um, everyone's different obviously and I ended up wearing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a photo, it's actually in one of my lip books I think coming up but yeah I wore a pink suede skirt and a white blouse and some like smart shoes so obviously this is just for an art subject like personally what I wore, everyone wears quite different things like people wear ripped, ripped jeans like I personally felt like first impressions mattered quite a lot so I wanted to dress quite smart which is why I wore the white blouse but obviously wearing the pink skirt added a bit of colour and I just think it's important to kind of show your personality with what you wear which is why I wore like the, I don't know, just the creative colours you put together especially if you're doing an art subject like if you're just going in black and white you're not going to make much of an impact, you know what I mean? but still be care careful and cautious what you wear because obviously first impressions do make a big impact um, um, and also how you portray yourself and like your body posture and that and if you shake their hand and that just be prepared for things like that they don't sit like this like just just try and portray yourself the best you possibly can also know that they know you're going to be nervous like don't walk in there thinking you're the only one nervous with other people as well just concentrate on what you're doing and yourself and your work and just Although you will be nervous, because everyone's everyone will be nervous. Like it's quite rare not to be nervous, because obviously it's an interview. It's you know, but usually they're quite like the interviews I went to were quite relaxed, and they weren't as I imagine sitting opposite a table all the time. And they're not always like that. Some are, some aren't. It just depends which university. But yeah, just be aware that they know that you're nervous, so they know that you might not remember everything, or you might muck up what you're saying. Just take your time. Go and see the interview. Take your time you know, relax a bit. I've really found that talking to the students that were there before really made me feel quite relaxed because they had a little look at my work and we had a little chat and then I was less nervous, whereas if you're just quiet and you don't have a chat to them, then it's kind of like harder to be relaxed. So that's that's what I found helped me. Um, or listening to music, just something that gets you in like the focus of mind before you go into your interview. And I think that's everything pretty much that I had on my list. So just double check. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I'm going to cover in this video. I will, like I said, probably do a separate video on the exact interview thing and portfolios because if you guys would like to see my portfolio, then comment down below and I shall show you it. Um, yeah, that is basically this video. I hope this video has helped, will help some of you guys if you are applying or you're looking to next year. Um, yeah, I still don't know where I'm going yet but hopefully in the next month or two I will um, 
but yeah so i hope you guys have enjoyed it is a chatty video but i don't often really do that many sit down chatty videos so i hope you guys like mine and i shall see you in my next video bye